Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome to the 8th Square's Corner. Yes, I am wearing the same shirt as I did last time because I am recording these back to back, task batching like a pro. In this video, I'm going to be discussing some random thoughts that have been floating around in my head that integrate a lot of different things. The general topic being marriage. So I've been reading The Feminine Mystique and I'm almost done with it. I'm very excited to be done with it because it's been a major slog, but also so I can finally make videos about it because there's also a lot of interesting things to say about it. But when I read, I often like to listen to music that puts me in a certain kind of mood that seems to match the book. So when I was reading The Scum Manifesto, which I will make a video about at some point after The Feminine Mystique, I was listening to a lot of angry music. When I've been reading The Feminine Mystique, I've been listening to a lot of 60s music, some instrumental, some vocal, and I took it as an opportunity to finally listen to all the Mad Men soundtrack albums that I had saved. I love the TV show Mad Men. I've watched it multiple times. If you're not familiar at all, it's a TV show set in the 1960s. So all the music that's not instrumental are generally songs from the 60s. So one song that was on one of these albums was this song called called Wives and Lovers. It's a Burt Bacharach song. The recording that I heard was done by Jack Jones. And I was immediately struck by the lyrics, especially because of a lot of the things that are discussed in The Feminine Mystique about marriage and the expectations for wives in the marriage and husbands in the marriage. And also because I recently just read a book called Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel, who is a sex therapist who's pretty famous. So some of you may have already heard of her. This book is on the older side. It was published in in 2006 versus her newer book called The State of Affairs, Rethinking Infidelity, which came out in 2017. And I also want to read that book, but Mating in Captivity is about how to relight that spark between you once you're married, about what happens to the erotic passion that you shared at the beginning of the relationship, why it disappears and how to get it back. She discusses theory from the therapy world, but she also uses pseudonyms to talk about specific couples or or at least representations of the kinds of common conflicts. One of the common things that comes up for couples as discussed in her book is once you're married and you're comfortable, you stop making the kind of effort with your appearance, the things you did to attract the other person when you were dating, because now you're comfortable and they're not just a place for eroticism, they're this place for comfort, they're your stability. There's a certain closeness between the two of you now. And for eroticism to exist, there needs to be space between you. There needs to to be some kind of separateness that can be bridged by becoming one. There's some kind of unknown that you want to make more known. And another important concept in the book is the threat of the third. She's not condoning cheating. She's not inherently suggesting threesomes. What she's saying is that part of what maintains an erotic charge between people is the threat that one of them could leave for someone else. So if you're in a position where you feel like you don't need to put forth any effort for your spouse to stay with you, then you can lose some of that erotic charge. And although that situation sounds appealing, it's not a good position to be in. What I mean is you can have security that the person that you're with is ultimately every day going to choose to be with you, but you should feel like your spouse has other options. They could leave you for someone else. They could go looking and they would probably find someone, but they choose not to because of how special you are to them, because of what you've built, because of their attraction to you, etc. They choose you even though they have other their options. So one way people can reintroduce that eroticism is to encourage their partners to flirt in front of them, for example, so that they have the opportunity to see their spouse with fresh eyes through someone who is attracted to them. And to feel that emotion inside, that slight fear of, oh, hey, yeah, they could leave me. And that renewed desire to stake your claim over that person. Another option is to discuss fantasies with each other reminding each other that the entirety of your sexual being is not focused on them and having sex with them. That you see people walking down the street, you find them attractive. You watch movies or television shows and you find people attractive. There are people in your office that you find attractive. There are just random fantasies of attractive people that pop into your head. So I thought it was interesting when I heard this song, Wives and Lovers, and you will understand why when I read the lyrics to you. 
Hey, little girl, comb your hair, fix your makeup. Soon he will open the door. Don't think because there's a ring on your finger, you needn't try anymore. For wives should always be lovers too. Run to his arms the moment he comes home to you. I'm warning you. Day after day, there are girls at the office, and men will always be men. Don't send him off with your hair still in curlers. You may not see him again. For wives should always be lovers too. Run to his arms the moment he comes home to you. He's almost here. Hey, little girl, better wear something pretty, something you'd wear to go to the city, and dim all the lights, pour the wine, start the music, time to get ready for love, time to get ready for love. So I thought the song was the perfect summation of everything I talked about here. The threat of the third, the idea that there are women out there that your man could be with instead of you, the idea of not putting forth the same effort that you did when you were dating, and that you should put forth that effort to make sure that your partner continues to choose you, is reminded of why they should continue to choose you. And I found one article that commented on how this song was sexist, although they didn't really take it personally. They didn't say the song is offensive and it should be banned. They were more kind of chuckling about it. But I don't think that it's a sexist song. It's a one-sided song. It's only talking about what a woman should do to make sure that her man doesn't leave her. But if you go looking, there are definitely songs that are the flip side of what men should do to make sure their woman doesn't leave them. The lyrics of the song may be a little bit different than this one, but I don't think this song is sexist. I think it's good advice. Yes, the reality of marriage, especially when you're parenting, is that you're not going to be the picture of the 1950s housewife dolled up all the time, but it's a good idea every now and then to have that date night, to do the things that you used to do, to put in the kind of effort that you used to do. It doesn't have to be dolling yourself up in makeup and a pretty dress. It could be as simple as the two of you used to take walks around the park together and you stopped doing that. The two of you used to sit side by side and read books together. Maybe one person always made Sunday breakfast for the other. I think beyond just the literal lyrics, that sentiment of it's a good idea to put in the effort to remind your partner of why they should continue to choose you when they have other options is decent advice. So those are just my off the cuff thoughts. Much more I could say, but I'm going to end it there. In a future video, I would love to talk about blues lyrics because despite how woke the blues dance scene is, blues music is in large part not very woke. It's largely red-pilled, if anything, when it comes to songs about relationships. So if that's something that would interest you, let me know. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, and I will have more content for you very soon.